Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. So today in the video, we're going to talk about feature in Logic Apps and the resubmit from action feature that's been added. Before we jump in, um, I just want to do a quick shout out up here for Turbo360 who sponsor the channel and help me try to grow the channel and produce videos. Um, please check out their stuff um, if you'd like to learn about cost management or uh, monitoring and management of Azure or anything about self-service integration. Now, today's video, so if we think about an example process, so I'm going to imagine I've got an integration where, let's say over here, we've got CRM, and that's going to send a message out to my integration, and over here I've got SAP. Now, in my integration, if you imagine I receive this message about a new order and I have a bunch of details like the customer and the, you know the order, the order lines. Now, if I if I build my logic app here, implement this integration, so I might do things like create customer and then I might create order and then I might create. Um, so let's say we create n times order line. So quite often people would build a big logic app that did, you know, kind of did those actions in the in the appropriate orchestrated order. And you might imagine the create order lines inside a loop. Now, imagine, you know, if you think about how we would build logic apps, typically um, one of the things we would often do is try and break these things down um, into separate sub logic apps with the idea that there might be problems in one part of the process that you need to fix so let's imagine we have we have a parent processor that orchestrates the entire process but then i might make a child logic app that does the or uh, sorry let me rub that out um so imagine i've got a child logic app that does the customer and then i have a child logic app that does the order and then we have this loop here. So let's imagine it's some kind of loop. And then in here we have we have the order line one. So imagine we have a scenario where from the you know the idea of the um, resubmit from the so I'm working through this process and the problem is if I get an error down here and I do a resubmit in the processor, my resubmission would start again right from the top up here and re-execute. So sometimes that would give you a problem where let's say that the customer was successful, the order failed. So you're going to then reprocess and you're going to redo the customer piece. Now, sometimes a system would have upsert capability, so that wouldn't be a problem. Sometimes you would have check customer exists and then, you know, update or insert appropriately. Um, sometimes you, you didn't have that and it, it would just be a, a problem at this point because you couldn't do the recreate customer again. And, and often we what we do is we'd kind of break these pieces down. Um, and you'd, you'd have some kind of logical order to them. So if this one failed, uh, passed, this one here failed, you could almost just resubmit the child logic app and then kind of go again from then. What what happened was that works, you know, as a design pattern, it works really well. The problem is you just end up with more logic apps and more complicated orchestration within your workflow to, to sort of support all these different scenarios. And, and often um, it would be the case that a workflow you know, the green path might be fairly simple, but once you have to accommodate all of the different edge cases about what if we get an error here, what if we get an error there, you end up taking a, a, a workflow that could be sort of fairly simple. Suddenly it becomes quite complicated just to deal with all these scenarios. So really um, what Microsoft are doing here is they're kind of, um, I'll just tidy this up a little bit. So really what they're doing in, is I can now just have one uh, one workflow, and I can do the the customer here. I can do the order. I can do the order lines inside a loop down here. And 
what would happen is if I if I had an error here, I can basically go to that same workflow and I can just go resubmit from this point here and it would it would basically start a new run up, but it would already have completed this bit, so it kind of skips it, but it would show that it was successful on the previous run. So this is pretty cool for me. Um I'll really like that. I can keep my workflows that bit simpler, but I can resubmit them in more advanced scenarios. So what we'll do next is we'll have a look at what that actually looks like. Um, now, in Logic App Standard, this has been out for quite a while. I think it's a bit more recent that it came into Logic App Consumption. So we'll talk about both. And here you can see I've got a, a workflow that executed down here. I can click on any of these shapes. I think this is the shape we're clicking on. And you can see we've got the action here where I can just go submit from this action. You would also, I think there's a right click menu here where you can resubmit as well. So what would happen is if I click this, it'll basically spin up a new run of the workflow. But you can see here, these little, little icons are grayed out. So here, here, here and here, they don't re-execute because they were already completed on the previous run. So you would see the data in the run history and then this one here where it's it's kind of much more highlighted shows you that's where it started the execution this time so it'll repeat this shape here but any previous data higher up um would would sort of just be the same as what it was before and it wouldn't re-execute re those shapes that's really cool for me if i think of a scenario where you know if i call out you know let's imagine one of my shapes down here failed and the problem was that here when i did this look up to crm let's imagine there was a data issue so one of the um one of the records that came back had invalid data on it that the workflow couldn't deal with so i've got an error so what would happen is my user for support could go into crm fix that row of data and then they could just go to the Logic app and then go resubmit from this point here. It'll re-query CRM, but get the updated data this time. So the data on the shape will be different to the previous run. But things like where we did this lookup here, that wouldn't re-execute. And then down here, it would continue. And hopefully this time it would just work. So that shows you how easy it is to do it in Logic App Standard. The great thing is um, they've also put the same feature into logic app consumption as well over here so here it's the same experience i click on this shape it shows me this um submit from action so again i could have the exact same scenario where it would um you know i'm querying crm they could fix the data in crm so I, when i do a resumption it'll go and re-execute re-query get different data and maybe, you know, if you imagine this bit down here about did the record exist, maybe previously the record didn't exist, so it would go and error out or something. This time it now does exist. My workflow would continue as it was expected to do. So hopefully um, that gives you a flavour of how simple it is to use this feature. I'm a massive fan of it. I think um, there's lots of ways this is going to help me out. I'm a huge fan that they've put it into consumption and standard logic apps. I think that really empowers people with solutions they've already built previously and solutions that they're building now to use this feature. And it really, you know, to me, this is like a big, um, big step forward in maturity. It gives us a really feature that, you know, it's going to help out, but it also makes your workflow simpler to implement for complex scenarios. Um, thank you for listening to today's video. I hope everybody has a great week.